Hey there Star Seekers, I hope you're all doing alright and welcome back to the channel for another SOS indie game review. Today we're going to be taking a look at Cave Bad. It's a roguelike arcade score chaser where you play as a ratio, the mega chinned miner, who also featured in another game that I reviewed a while back called Pity Pit. I recommend checking out Pity Pit if you've never heard of it before and you'll find a link to my review of it in the description box below. Now Cave Bad has swapped out Pity Pit's platforming action for a top down perspective, which sees you working through procedurally generated dungeons, collecting upgrades and battling demons to once again rescue your beloved Gwendolina. In this review I'm going to be covering everything you can expect from the game and providing a bit of my own opinions, so go ahead and sit back, relax and let's get started. So having played Pity Pit and quite enjoyed it, I was quite excited when I saw Cave Bad pop up onto the eShop as it appeared to be offering OG Zelda style gameplay with a bit of Bomberman thrown in for good measure. Now story wise, unlike Pity Pit which begins with a bit of an intro showing your nearest and dearest being snatched by Big Bad Johnson, Cave Bad actually has no introduction nor does the eShop description contain anything story related. And it wasn't until I got to the end of the game that Gwendolyn once more made an appearance. To me this was a bit of a shame, as the game is set in the same universe as Pity Pit and they could have taken this opportunity to actually develop the world and add a bit of character to it. Now I'll start by saying that Cave Bad's gameplay loop doesn't really do anything new with the traditional roguelike formula. Each time we enter the dungeon, its layout is randomly generated, with room layouts and the enemies within them selected from a pool. Rooms themselves are laid out in a 14x7 grid, with soft and hard blocks as well as lava pools used to form a decent assortment of layouts, though I did feel the size of the rooms was too small at times and I would frequently have enemies spawn right next to me, giving me no time at all to react and take them out. Now our objective on each floor is pretty simple, we need to make our way to the boss room and defeat it, after which we can usually snag ourselves an upgrade before heading on down to the next floor, but we're able to begin boss fights whenever we choose by attacking this statue and prior to doing this, you'll usually want to fully explore the current floor to gain some extra power ups. Now aside from the boss room, floors contain three other types of rooms. The first of these being combat rooms, indicated by white tiles on the minimap, and upon entering these rooms you'll actually be locked in and won't be able to exit until all enemies have been defeated. Combat in the game is quite simple, you move a ratio with either the d-pad or left thumbstick, attack enemies with projectiles from your pick which can also be used to break soft blocks and you also have a bomb which detonates a few seconds after you plant it which can be used to both damage enemies and destroy hard blocks. When it comes to the game's enemies, to be honest there isn't a huge amount of variety to them with one or two new enemies introduced each floor. Aside from two static enemies and one mobile enemy who fires projectiles, none of the other enemies actually have any real type of attack and they're simply just programmed to walk towards you, dealing damage when they come into contact with you. Now from my experience there are two main issues with the game's enemies. Firstly the programming of the movement pathing isn't great and it often sees enemies just stuck walking against blocks presenting no kind of threat whatsoever. The second issue comes in the form of hitboxes. While your hitbox appears to be quite large and you take hits as soon as you come into contact with something, enemy hitboxes only seem to occupy the bottom half of the sprites, which means that your attacks will often pass right through them and this can be a right nightmare when fighting the ghost boss who spawns mini ghosts. Overall I didn't really find any of the game's enemies or rooms presented much of a challenge and more often than not when entering rooms enemies would be stuck between blocks or across lava pits meaning they couldn't actually get to me to deal any damage. Now aside from your standard enemy rooms, you also have one blue shop room per floor where you can spend the coins earned from killing enemies to buy hearts which restore your health or on a single random pickup. You also have one yellow upgrade room per floor and these rooms feature a single chest which also contains a random pickup. Now these pickups include upgrades to your maximum health, damage or movement speed, several different bomb upgrades which increases explosion range by a certain number of squares and pickaxe upgrades which also just appear to increase your damage, though there are a few of these pickups which change your projectiles. 
Most notable of all these pickups is the incredibly overpowered explosive bullets pickup, which makes defeating enemies and all of the game's bosses an absolute breeze. Pair this pickup with the golden hammer upgrade, and you're basically unstoppable, obliterating anything in your path in a matter of seconds. Now, considering its price, I wasn't expecting Cavebad to offer the same amount of content as other roguelikes, but having played Pity Pit, I was expecting a bit of a challenge, something that might have occupied me for at least a few hours. Unfortunately though, after smashing my way through four floors and the bosses, all of which are pretty easy by the ghost boss, I arrived at floor 5 and to my surprise after beating the boss on this floor, the game actually ended and took me back to the title screen. From there, my only option was to attempt another run, which I did and discovered an alternate ending to the game, but other than that, all you can really do is keep attempting to gain higher scores by breaking into rooms outside of the main dungeon layout using bombs. The issue with this is, there are no online or local leaderboards, so other than your own sense of achievement, there isn't really much to drive you to keep doing this. One final detail I have to mention is that the eShop description mentions puzzle solving, though throughout my time playing I didn't encounter puzzles of any kind, unless working out how to kill the static projectile enemies is considered to be a puzzle. Now when it comes to visuals, I really like the game's 8-bit style, there was some nice sprite work, and each floor had its own theme to add a little visual variety. Audio wise we get some great sounding retro sound effects and a really nice 8-bit chiptune soundtrack to play along to. Overall, taking its price into consideration, Cavebad still offers a decent amount of fun and would serve fine as a casual time filler game, but it's a little slim on the content front and if you're someone who plays games for extended periods of time, you'll likely burn through everything it has to offer in about an hour or two. With all things considered, for a rating I'm going to be giving Cavebad 2 out of 5 stars. Cavebad is not a bad little high score chaser, which does offer a bit of casual roguelike fun, but the fun is short lived, and I feel it had way more potential than it currently offers. You can get Cavebad from the UK Switch eShop, where it's usually priced at £4.49, or from the US eShop for $4.99. Alternatively, the game's also available on PlayStation and Xbox. So that just about does it for this review of Cavebad on the Nintendo Switch. Don't forget to hit that like button if it helped you out. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on both the game and the review in the comments section below. And make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to be notified of new Switch game reviews I upload every few days. For now though, as always, I just want to thank you all once again for watching. And until next time, take care of yourselves and game on.